A very good evening and welcome to the news tonight. Your one stop for the day's top stories from India and across the world. I'm Tracy Shilshi and here are the headlines. The 7th P-Panel submits the report to Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, suggests 23.55% hike in pay and allowances of government employees. On Indira Gandhi's 98th birth anniversary, Congress leadership attacks the NDA government. Rahul Gandhi challenges the government to probe allegations against him. RBI staff members go on a mass casual leave, demand revision of pension, express concern against prospective erosion of RBI's authority. CBI files a charge sheet in the Sheena Bora murder case, arrests media baron Peter Mukherjee. And DNA analysis confirms the identity of Wednesday's shootout victims. Suspected mastermind of the Paris attacks, Abdul Hamid Abaoud, is killed. Top story this evening. The 7th Central Pay Commission submitted its report to the Finance Minister Arun Jaitley today. The commission has recommended a substantial increase of 23.55% in pay and allowances of government employees. According to PTI, the news agency, salaries of central government employees will go up by 16%, while allowances will be increased by 63%. Also, increase in pensions will be around 24%. The Commission has recommended the minimum basic pay for central government employees at 18,000 and the maximum pay of 2.25 lakhs per month. The Commission, headed by retired Justice A.K. Mathur, has also recommended a 3% annual increment for central government staff. It also recommended one rank, one pension for central government employees as well as the armed forces. The recommendations, if implemented, will impact 47 lakh service employees and 52 lakh pensioners. The basic pay will start at 18,000. We have abolished the great pay and the pay band also. So, and that the total increase in the basic pay will be 14.27. The speculation of 15 was little of the mark. <laughs> the maximum pay for a apex scale will be 225,000. And the cabinet said the secretary's pay will be about 250,000. The pay structure, considering the great pay structure, the state of employees here too will be, uh, and the fitment formula will be 2.57 for all. Then the annual increment will be 3%. We have increased the military service pay for defense personnel. That is, today they are getting 6,000. They will get, officer will get 15,500. And for the nursing staff, 10,800. And for the non-combatants, uh, JCO and combatants, 5,200 from 2,000. And for the non-combatants enrolled in Air Force, from 1,000 to 3,600. This report will impact on currently 47 lakh serving employees of the government of India. It will also impact on 52 lakh pensioners. This also includes the defense personnel. Over and above this, these formulas uh, which are finally accepted by the government also impact on autonomous bodies, universities, central universities, public sector undertakings, etc. The state governments uh, will take their own view as far as this subject is concerned. And this came on a day when employee and officers as unions of the Reserve Bank went on a mass casual leave today to press for the resolution of some long-standing demands and some recent ones. They also expressed their opposition to some reforms that the government is planning for the bank. 17,000 RBI staff members took a day off on Thursday in protest warning that the agitation could escalate. Their unions told the government to keep its hands off the RBI. The government's plans to set up a monetary policy committee and impose curbs on the foreign exchange management are sore points. With the intervention of the government, then it will be something which is 
they people are trying to dictate the things which we don't want and will never uh, allow such things to happen in times to come. The staff members also said that their pension be adjusted to rising wages. The demand is an old one and the unions had struck work in February 2009 on the same issue. Pension updation government of India has pay commission in her 10 years. And one side says that the government pension scheme is at the par hai. The opposition is alleging that the government was trying to stifle RBI's powers. I appeal to the government not to do anything in hurry, consult the unions, consult the Reserve Bank management and let us uh, see what can be done. And uh, finally, Parliament. Uh, the yeah, finance ministry should take parliament also into... Uh, power of the RBI is being cut by the central government. It is not by the central government, but a commission was set up under Mr. Krishna, which said that the, there should be a uh, draft financial code, which has to be implemented. The RBI governor, four deputy governors and 11 executive directors who aren't part of any association or union were exempt from the mass leave program. It was the first strike since Governor Raghuram Rajan took charge. Rajan had agreed with the government to form a monetary policy committee which will have its representatives in it. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. The Supreme Court has said that the collegium system of appointment of judges shall not be put on hold. Further, it reserved its order after hearing the suggestions by various lawyers, bar bodies and associations on improving the system. Earlier, refusing to formulate a draft memorandum of procedure the union government had said that a draft procedure would undermine the role of the Chief Justice of India. The Supreme Court had asked the centre to formulate the draft procedure for collegium reforms. The procedure under which appointments are made uh, was prepared in 1998 by the centre in consultation with the CGI. The government says that it will either come out with a procedure in consultation with the CGI or leave it to the collegium or to improve the system. All right, with that, a quick break here, but still ahead. Rajnath Singh calls on Chinese Premier Li Qiang. More on that when we return. Fears of erosion of autonomy or a demand to revise pensions. Why did the RBI workers go on strike? Watch The Big Picture at 9.30pm on Rajya Sabha Television. Get live Rajya Sabha session. News, views, reports and analysis you can trust on social media subscribe follow like Rajya Sabha television welcome back to the news tonight let's get you some more national news and on the 98th birth anniversary of Indira Gandhi the top leadership of the Congress criticized the BJP leadership while former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh called the economic policies of the NDA government directionless, Vice President Rahul Gandhi challenged it to prove allegations levelled against him. Modi ji, your government You have agencies. Now take these agencies. Do an investigation on me. And if you get something in six months, close me. This is what you have अपने चमचों से मेरे ऊपर फेंकते हो मेरे परिवार के ऊपर आप सालों से फेंक रहे हो अब आप ऑपोजिशन में नहीं हो अब आप सरकार में हो छपे छप छपन इनकी छाती निकालो एजेंसियां लगाओ मेरे पीछे और मुझे बंद करो अगर मैंने कुछ गलत किया है the Congress Vice President choosing the 98th birth anniversary of his grandmother and former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi to respond to the recent allegations against him challenging the ruling party to prove their charges 
Rahul didn't spare even the RSS, the parent organization of the BJP, equating it with the banned militant outfit Simmi. Former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh opened yet another front against the government. Inaugurating the day-long event of the youth wing of Congress, he questioned the economic policies of the NDA government. We should today go and tell the country the harmful consequences of Modi government having done away with the planning commission. Today, the economic policies of the country have no sense of direction. Congress President Sonia Gandhi asked party workers to fight to preserve the secular fabric of the nation. We must fight to preserve the secular fabric of our nation and we must never forget that India will not really progress if the weakest and most deprived do not progress. While the Congress has been raising the issue of communal harmony, questioning the economic policies of the government, it is for the first time that party vice president has responded to personal allegations. Vishal Dahiya, Rajya Sabha TV, Delhi. Meanwhile, the stage is set for the swearing-in of Nitish Kumar in Patna tomorrow. Her host of dignitaries, including various chief ministers, will be present at the event. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi is also likely to attend the function. Meanwhile, uh, Union Ministers Venkaya Naidu and Rajiv Pratap Rudi will be representing the central government. Patna's historic Gandhi Maidan decked up for the oath ceremony of Nitish Kumar as Bihar Chief Minister. Slated to start at 2 p.m. on Friday, Quite a few political heavyweights are expected to attend the function. They will include Chief Ministers of Nine States and Parliamentary Affairs Minister Venkaya Naidu, who will represent the Prime Minister. This time, this is a the Nami-Girami personality is coming. And this time, we have to see someone ओथ ले रहे हैं हमारी शुभकामनाएं हैं उन जो तमाम तरह के वादे किए हैं तमाम तरह के सब्जबाग दिखाए हैं उन्हें उम्मीद है कि उसको पूरा करने में वो सफल हो The tight security includes over 2000 personnel at the venue Two canopy shaped dais have been erected for the VVIPs and for those under SPG cover A separate gallery has been set up for women This will be the fifth time that Nitish Kumar will be sworn in as the chief minister this time, he is leading a government of the Mahagat Bandhan that will have ministers from his JDU, the RGD and the Congress. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In other news, Colonel Santosh Mahadik was cremated with full military honours today at his hometown Satara in Maharashtra. Defence Minister Manohar Parikar, Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis and thousands of people paid homage to the martyr. With a 21-gun salute, the nation bid adieu to the martyr. Amid the ringing sounds of Bharat Mata Ki Jai, thousands of people offered their respects to slain army officer Colonel Santosh Mahadik. The mourners included Defence Minister Manohar Parikar, Commanding Officer of 41 Rashtri Rifles. Colonel Mahadik was critically injured on Tuesday in an operation at the Hajinaka forest area of Kupwara near the LOC in Kashmir. He died of his injuries at a hospital later. Colonel Mahadik is survived by a wife and two children. The CBI today arrested media tycoon Peter Mukherjee in connection with the Sheena Bora murder case. This was after the agency filed a thousand-page charge sheet against him and two others. Peter Mukherjee was the former CEO of Star India. He is one of the suspects in the murder of his stepdaughter, Sheena Bora. His wife, Indrani Mukherjee, the main accused in the case, has been in police custody since the 7th of September. Now, Home Minister Rajnath Singh met Chinese Premier Li Qiang in Beijing today. Their talks featured efforts to step up security cooperation between both the countries. During his six-day visit, Rajnath Singh is slated to hold talks with several Chinese leaders on ways to strengthen cooperation in a host of areas, including combating terrorism. Earlier, the Home Minister visited the People's uh, Public Security University in Beijing 
that trains police officers in security-related operations. This was the first visit by a Home Minister to China in a decade. In our special report, the government is slashing the prices of drugs and stents by as much as 60%. The move is expected to make treatment of critical diseases far more affordable. Treating cancer and cardiovascular diseases will be a lot more cheaper now. With the government deciding to sell drugs for these ailments at a 50 to 60% discount. The price cut will apply to 200 cancer drugs, 186 cardiovascular medicines, 148 types of stents and cardiac implants. But although patients are happy to get these medicines cheaper, the worry is about how to get them administered. I think it's a right uh, facility, nice director from the government of India. But the only drawback is how do, I we, how do we get doctors? Because the medicines you're selling here are definitely cheaper. But how do I administer it? I'll have to look for a doctor who does that. I'll have to look for a facility where these can be mixed and be utilized. All these drugs can be brought from the government-run Amrit store at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. The store will soon open at Sabdajang Hospital and Ram Manohar Lohia Hospital as well. Of course, we cannot say that Amrit is Amrit, mein koi far kisi ko kuch hota nahi hai. but I think if it does give uh, medicines particularly anti-cancer medication and also some drugs and stents related to cardiac ailments at a 50 to 60 percent subsidized cost to the user, what more I can ask as a citizen? Given their high incidence, the government has decided to focus on cancer and cardiovascular diseases for the initial program. Cancer cases have gone up by 60 percent since 1990. Worldwide, the year 2013 saw 14.9 million new cases of cancer and 8.2 million deaths. Globally, cardiovascular diseases are among the leading cause of fatalities. The project has already begun in aims on pilot basis and it is expected to replicate other central government hospitals within the next three months. The government is now planning to expand the program and reach out to other regional cancer care centers. With camera person Santosh, this is Anshu Jay Singh for Rajya Sabha TV. And now let's get you a quick roundup of all the other national news and updates in Nationwide. The Calcutta High Court has cancelled the bail granted to Trinamool Congress leader Madan Mitra, who is an accused in the Sharada scam and had yesterday resigned as the state's transport minister hours after CBI pleaded that his bail be cancelled if he was still functioning as a cabinet minister in the state government. Sri Lankan authorities today arrested 14 Indian fishermen for allegedly violating the international maritime boundary line. The detention comes just a week after 126 Indian fishermen were released by the Lankan Navy last week. The death toll in rain-related incidents in Tamil Nadu has crossed 100. Parts of Chennai received fresh rains this morning with the northeast monsoon becoming active again. The weather office has forecast more rains in the next 24 hours, especially in areas along the Western Ghats. Expressing grief over the deaths, Chief Minister Jayalalitha announced a relief of 4 lakh rupees each to the bereaved families. With that, another quick break here. But up next, international news. And Barack Obama says that Assad must quit to end the civil war in Syria. Details of that in a bit. Angkor Wat in the ancient land of Cambodia, one of the largest temples in the world. Ruined by invasion and war. It is then that this temple complex of Angkor Wat became desolate, it got abandoned, it was taken over by the French colonizers and finally it was taken over by the Buddhist monks. India's restoration diplomacy has reaffirmed the civilizational links. We share the common heritage of Buddhism and other historical sites. Watch Angkor Wat, a shared heritage, on Rajya Sabha Television. Fears of erosion of autonomy or a demand to revise pensions. Why did the RBI workers go on strike? Watch The Big Picture at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television.
Welcome back. Let's get you now some international news. And uh, moving on to the latest from France, the suspected mastermind of the Paris attacks, Abdel Hamid Abaoud, has been identified as one of those killed in Wednesday's raid on an apartment in Saint-Denis. His body was found riddled with bullets and shrapnel in a shattered apartment in the northern suburb of Paris. The 28-year-old Belgian national was identified from his fingerprints. Eight people were arrested and at least two killed in the raid on the flat. Heavily armed police uh, stormed the building after a tip-off that Abaoud was in Paris. A woman at the flat reported uh, in French media to be Abaoud's cousin died during the raid after activating a suicide vest. Mais grâce à l'opération hier du raid et de la Berry, le procureur vient de le confirmer. Nous savons aujourd'hui que Abaoud, le cerveau de ces attentats, l'un des cerveaux, car il faut être particulièrement prudent, et nous savons les menaces, se trouvait parmi les morts. Et je veux saluer encore une fois le travail exceptionnel de nos services. In fact, the French Prime Minister had also warned that there is a risk that is extremists could use chemical and biological weapons to target France. Valls also urged the European Union to urgently adopt measures to share airline passenger information and support the war against terror. French Prime Minister Manuel Valls has warned that France could face chemical or biological attacks from terror groups. Valls issued the warning as MPs debated extending the state of emergency after the Paris attacks. Ce sont les modes opératoires, les façons de frapper, de tuer évoluent sans cesse. L'imagination macabre des donneurs d'ordre est sans limite. Fusils d'assaut, décapitation, bombes humaines, armes blanches ou tout à la fois. The Prime Minister was addressing the French Parliament ahead of a vote to extend the state of emergency by three months. He told MPs that terrorism hit France not because of what it is doing in Iraq and Syria, but for what it is. La menace terroriste est là parce que nos concitoyens nous demandent de tout mettre en œuvre pour les protéger, parce que nous devons continuer à agir avec efficacité. L'état d'urgence doit être prolongé sur tout le territoire, en métropole comme en Outre-mer. Investigators believe the attacks, the worst atrocity in France since World War II, was set in motion from Syria with Islamist cells in neighboring Belgium organizing the mayhem. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. U.S. President Barack Obama has said that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad should be removed from office to end Syria's civil war. Obama also said that Russia's effort in Syria is only propping up Assad. Obama's comments come days after his meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin who has always strongly opposed Assad's ouster and seeks to maintain Russia's foothold in Syria. Obama's comment come at, comes, in fact, as the civil war intensifies in Syria, helping the Islamic State increase its power. The terror group has recently carried out large-scale attacks in Paris. Of course, we saw in Beirut and bombed a Russian airliner in Egypt, killing hundreds of civilians. Assad's fate has become a key stumbling block to peace in Syria and a point of contention between the West and Assad's backers in Moscow and Tehran. The bottom line is, I do not foresee a situation in which we can end the civil war in Syria while Assad uh, remains in power. And by the way, uh, that's not uh, a matter of, of my decision making. Even if I said that was okay, I still don't think it would actually work. You could not get the Syrian people, the majority of them, to agree to that kind of act. The Indian government froze the assets of over three dozen entities on charges of financing terror and laundering illicit funds. The latest report of the global anti-financial terror body, the FATF, says that India blocked three lakh euros belonging to 37 entities till 15th of August this year. The Financial Action Task Force report is part of the mid-session review of various countries and economic powers of the world. In fact, India is a full member of the global body along with other nations like the US, France, Germany and the UK. And for more international news and updates, here's Global Buzz. After a shocking bomb blast in the city of Yola, Nigeria was rocked again on Wednesday when two suicide bombers killed at least 15 people in the northern city of Kano and injured 53 people. The Islamic State group has announced that it killed a Chinese and a Norwegian hostage.
This was after a combined French and Russian airstrike on its Syrian stronghold reportedly left 33 of its fighters dead. 2611 mastermind Hafiz Saeed challenged the Pakistan government's decision to ban media coverage of his outlawed organizations Jamaat ud Dawa and the Falai Insaniyat Foundation. Hafiz filed a petition to this effect in the Lahore High Court today. And now time for all the updates from the world of sports. India played out a two-all draw against Australia in the first hockey test of the three-match series at Rajnandgaon. India were going well towards victory with a scoreline of 2-1 before Chris Cirello converted the penalty corner in the 58th minute to make it to all. The second match of the series will be played in Raipur on Sunday. Rohan Bopana and Florian Magia finish second in the Ash Smith group after suffering a defeat against Italian pair of Fabio Fognini and Simone Bolelli in their last group match. Eight-seeded Indo-Romanian pair made a strong comeback after losing the first set but eventually lost 4-6, 5-10 to the fifth seeds. In the absence of Saina Nehwal, India's shuttling campaign came to an end at the Hong Kong Open on day one itself. All Indian players lost their first-round matches at the Super Series event. K. Shrikant, P. V. Sindhu, Ajay Jairam, H. S. Pranoy and the women's doubles pair of Jwala Gutta and Ashwini Ponapa all failed at the first hurdle. The World Anti-Doping Agency or WADA suspended Russia's anti-doping agency amid calls to extend investigations to other countries and sports. The move raised the possibility of Russia being barred from the Olympics if it did not fall in line with accepted international rules, the IAAF has already provisionally suspended Russia from international competition. And that's all we have for you on the news tonight. Thanks so much for joining us.